Hey everyone, Professor Hank here, and today we're going to talk about structures and pointers. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So we'll get started by having a structure, and we'll just give it a couple of integers. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll create a foo variable and we'll initialize it with, I don't know, eight and three. So now what we'll do is we'll create a pointer. And remember, a pointer is just a variable that holds a memory address. So we've used integer pointers, double point pointers, float pointers in the past. Now we're just going to use a foo pointer. So same kind of thing. We're going to need the data type. We're going to need the asterisk. And then we're going to need the name of our pointer. Okay. And we can use the address operator with structures. So once we've done that, we can now access F through P. All right. In the same kind of ways that we've done it before. You know, you might think that if we wanted to display the contents of the X variable, right? So if we were to use the plain old foo variable, right? Do something like this, you know, no problem. You know, we're going to see eight appear on the screen, right? Um, because we assigned eight to X, we initialized that X with eight, that member. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, let's do the exact same thing. We'll just do it with the pointer this time. We'll dereference the pointer and then we'll access the X. So you can kind of see that we've already got a squiggle under here and this isn't going to work, right? Why, why not? Okay. It's because of the order of operations. So the dot operator has a higher order, right? It has higher precedence dot has precedence over the dereference operator. So what this is saying right here is this is saying dereference what's in X, right? So this right here has priority. So you're extracting the eight from the X and then trying to dereference eight, which doesn't make any sense, right? Because you can't dereference an integer. You're having to dereference or you have to dereference a memory address. So if we wanted to make this work, then what we'd have to do is we'd have to change the order of operations. Okay. So how are we going to change the order of operations? We're just going to put our parentheses around that instead. So now what we're doing is we're saying, go to the memory location whose address is in P, right? Whose address is in P foo F. So then we now have access to the F structure and then we can access its X member. Okay. So you're going to see that we're going to see eight and it's going to work just fine. Now this is a little awkward. And so as an alternative to this, we can use this, this arrow like notation. Okay. And, um, what it is, is it's hyphen and then angle bracket. Okay. And then you put the member that you want. So this is equivalent right, to what we have above. Okay. This is, equivalent to star p dot x same means the exact same thing it's just syntactically a little bit cleaner and the design of this operator this little arrow operator here is on purpose it's to make it look as if you know you're having a pointer right that you're working with a pointer because it's an arrow it's pointing somewhere right okay and then we can also get our y out of there too just just for completeness Okay, so you can see that, you know, this is going to work just fine. Okay, so you can do either, right? Most people will use the arrow operator. I mean, it's kind of unusual to see this kind of code somewhere, but you can do it, right? It means the exact same thing as this. These are, these are equivalent. Okay, so let's take a look now at uh, dynamic memory allocation. Okay, so let us dynamically allocate a foo structure. All right. So I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can do that. So remember we can create a foo pointer, which we will do. 
And then if we want to dynamically allocate a foo, we dynamically allocate it in the exact same way we would um, any other primitive data type, right? So you could say new int, for example, right? We know how to do that. Instead of saying new int, we're just going to say new foo. That's it. And then this is going to create a new unnamed foo variable in memory and new is going to return its memory address. So we're going to have to put that memory address somewhere. Where are we going to put it? We're going to put it in a variable that holds a memory address. What kind of variable? What kind of memory address? A foo variable, right? So now we've got that. And let's not forget that for every new that executes, you have to have a delete statement. So we're going to delete when we're done with it. Okay. And then uh, once we have this, right, P is now pointing to the foo, right, the unnamed foo variable. So if I want to assign to X something, what do I do? I use P to go to the memory location where the foo variable is stored, and then I'm going to access its X member, and I'm going to assign it a value. And then I'm going to do the same thing for its Y. And then I will see out both of those. Okay. And remember, you can do this if you want. It's kind of weird, but you can do it, right? Um, it's possible. It's not wrong. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And so then we will, oops, I forgot my arrow here, my uh, stream insertion operator. So we'll go ahead and um, test that. You're going to see that it's going to work just fine. Okay. So that's how you can dynamically allocate a structure. And don't forget, you always have to free up the memory used by your structure when you're done with it to avoid memory leaks. All right. Now that is dynamically allocating a foo structure. And let me show you one more thing here too. You can use initialization lists, right? With this dynamically allocated foo as well. All you have to do is put your initialization list right after the foo here, and then you can put whatever values you want in there. Okay. And so that will, that will work. Right. So then you'll see uh, the three and the nine. So you can use initialization lists with dynamically allocated um, foo structures, right? Or dynamically allocated structures. You can use initialization lists. All right. So let us now see what it looks like to um, dynamically allocate a array. Okay. So let's do that. So Remember, if we were if we were doing a dynamically allocated array of integers, we would have something that looks like maybe this. Well, we're going to use a similar syntax. It's just that instead of dynamically allocating an array of integers, we're going to dynamically allocate an array of foos. Okay, so we're going to have three foos, and we're going to delete our array when we're done with it. Don't forget, since it's an array, you have to have those square brackets. And then uh, we're going to specify the pointer that contains the memory address for the array that we want to delete. So we've got that. Once our array is created, then we can access it just like any other array. So I can say n0 dot x equals 3 and n0 dot y equals two, fine. Um, I could also asterisk n plus one dot x, uh, dang you autocomplete, dot x um, equals seven and star uh, n plus one dot y equals four. But remember what we said about the order of operations. What this is actually trying to do is it's trying to dereference this X here. So I would have to override that order of operations just like before. See that? See how gross that is? Yuck. Yuck, 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 right? Um, you can do it, but it's disgusting. What's cleaner is just to use the plain old array notation, right? So n two dot x equals um, zero, and n two dot y equals 
um, one. Okay, once we've done that, then we can use ourselves a little for loop here to uh, go through and print out the contents of the array. Okay, so we'll do C out in of I dot X and in of I dot Y. Okay. And then that will print out the contents, the contents of our array. Okay. And there we go. There's our struct again, just in case you forgot what it looked like. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. So you can see there's the contents of our array, right? And just like before, Right. You can use initialization lists here as well. Right. So we're going to have three elements. So we'll have three initialization lists inside of our um, initialization list. So it's initialization list of initialization list, right? This is going to be for the first foo element. This will be for the second foo element. This will be for the third foo element. So we'll just do one, two. We'll do three, four, and then five, six. And uh, I'll get rid of this code here so it's not interfering. So the output doesn't get in the way. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, so you can see that that worked just fine. All right, so there you go. Now you know how to use pointers and structures. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine and you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe. You can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.